The U.S. Space Agency says its Parker Solar Probe has survived the closest ever approach to the sun and is still continuing its mission. The unmanned spacecraft passed within a record-breaking 6 million kilometers of the star earlier this week. Parker is the world's fastest spaceship. Recently, it got up to more than 690,000 kilometers per hour. It was launched in 2018 to collect information from the sun's outer atmosphere. The probe withstood temperatures of nearly 1,000 degrees Celsius. Well, let's break down some of those crazy facts and figures with Keith Cowing. He's editor of NASAWatch.com and a former NASA scientist. Keith, this is the closest a human-made object has ever been to the sun. Now, to me, six million kilometers away still sounds pretty far, but space scientists like you see it very differently, I, I assume. Well, they invented the word Elskazike for something like this. I mean, this is really an amazing thing. Um, you know, if you wanted to be a complete geek about this, this was going at 0.064% of the speed of light, which is almost one-tenth or 1,000. So that's no, nobody's ever done anything like that before. So just in and of itself, building a spacecraft that can go that fast within three-something million miles of the sun, point at the sun, and then call home and say, hey, I'm still here. That, that in and of itself is just an amazing engineering feat. Nobody's ever done it before. Well, let's talk about the, the speed because you, you say this is a, an unprecedented speed and it's not slowing down. How is that possible? Well, the way this was done, it's a game of, I use my little model sun here. Imagine this is a billiard ball and we launch it from Earth and we then make it swing around Earth and Venus and the sun. And every time you do that, you go faster and faster and faster. Well, now the spacecraft is traveling at this high speed in a certain orbit that goes in towards the sun. And although it, we're celebrating the first time it's done this, it may do this five or six more times. Eventually, you know, they'll point the spacecraft right at the sun and it'll burn it out and only little pieces of it will be left. But it's all orbital dynamics. It's like a billiard ball game or a tennis match. How long do you think it'll be till it, uh, till it gets burned up by the sun? How, much, how many more turns does it have? Well, it'll be into next year. There's five or six more times. And then after that, they will actually point the spacecraft at the sun to, in essence, get one last close shot. And then after that, the instruments will melt away. But the heat shield, that circular piece in front, that'll remain for millions of years. So, But it won't be sending anybody any messages. Oh, my gosh. What, what are scientists actually hoping to learn about the sun and, and other stars from this probe? Well, the sun is in a, in a cycle every 11 years or so where it gets more active and less active. When it's very active, it throws out flares of par particles. Most of the, here's a picture on your screen now. Most of them don't even bother us, but some come at Earth. And if they come at the wrong time, uh, they can disrupt satellite communication. So our link would die right now. Uh, GPS systems can be affected, weather satellites and whatnot. Given that our society is so dependent on its interconnectedness and electronics that you really don't want that to happen. And if you think there's going to be a flare, you want to know as soon as possible that it might happen. And by studying the sun this close, looking deep into the sun at flares and things that are happening, we'll get a much, much, much better idea of how this all works and be better prepared to predict things and then, of course, to react to them when they happen. You're talking about telecommunications there. I mean, some of us have trouble just getting a phone signal. How do scientists stay in contact with the Parker Solar Probe so far away? Well, it has a shield. I can just grab something at my desk here. It has a shield here that they point at the sun to keep everything behind it from burning up. But it can turn and do things at certain angles. And it's designed to sort of like I said before, survive a certain number of flights around the sun before it melts and burns up. So it's designed to sort of go through this, which is another amazing aspect of the spacecraft that was designed to mm. experience heat levels that you normally only see when you're coming back from, from outer space into Earth's atmosphere. So it's just, again, an amazing accomplishment. Keith Cowing, always great to talk to you. Keith Cowing from uh, nasawatch.com. Thanks so much. My pleasure.